Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Uh, today we will talk about derivatives of higher order, like second derivative, second, uh, third derivative, etc. Well, first of all, let me just explain the concept behind this. What is the derivative? The definition of the derivative of the function f of x, which is defined at certain interval, which might be infinite in both sides, at point x0 is a limit of increment of the function at point x0 given the argument increment of delta x as this increment of the argument uh, tends to zero, if this limit exists, obviously. So let's just think about what this represents. We have to have the function and we have to have the point. And at every point where this limit exists, we have the definition of the derivative. So basically what I'm saying is that this the whole thing represents a function which obviously de de depends on the original function f but it's defined at point x0. Now let's consider this function and consider all these argument points within this interval where this limit exists. So for all these points x0 where this limit exists function g of x0 is defined. So basically it's a function. And what's the domain of this function? Well, it's not greater than this obviously domain because it's only for those x0 from this domain where this limit might exist. But it might exist on a subset, on a smaller uh, set of points, smaller than this interval, if there are certain points where this limit does not exist. So in any case, this function is defined on some kind of a domain which is a subset or maybe exactly equal to a b and it has certain values the value is this particular limit so the derivative is a function which is defined on uh, maybe uh, narrower but, more, but, but, but maybe exactly the same interval as original function f of x is defined and obviously it depends on the function itself and traditionally this is denoted as f and uh, prime or something um, another definition another notation is this But now it doesn't really make sense to use x0 because we're talking not about a particular point where this particular limit is, it, it exists. We can talk about any point from this interval where this limit exists and I can actually just scratch this 0 and talk about new function f prime of x or df of x divided by dx which denotes my um, derivative of the function f at point x from this interval obviously with a node where this limit exists true okay now remember a few samples which we have like the derivative of a sine is a cosine etc it's a function so if this is a function i can actually consider a second derivative, which is a derivative of this derivative. How is it defined? Now we don't need this g anymore. Well, it's denoted as f second of x, which is limit f prime of x minus f plus delta x minus f prime of x 
divided by f again wrong divided by delta x as delta x goes to zero again obviously if this limit exists so first requirement is that the derivative exists which means this limit should exist at point x and then if the derivative of this function which is this limit exists at point x then we have a second derivative so it might be defined on even narrower um, area so basically if you forget about this if the limit exists uh, note which I'm trying to emphasize every time basically we are talking about one function defined on some axis which is dependent on original function then another function which is dependent on this function and we can continue this as long as these limits exist we can continue this um, this process of building uh, the second, the third, the fourth derivative it's a derivative of the derivative of the derivative as many times as you want as long as these limits exist well sometimes there are cases which you can uh, infinite number of derivatives uh, take from derivative from derivative infinite number if it's if this limit is defined for instance for every point and uh, throughout the whole process then here you go now the third derivative is obviously f its limit of f second derivative as delta x goes to, to zero and then obviously you can define f4 I'm using the Roman numerals which is the derivative of the third derivative f5 etc. so usually with these higher order higher order derivatives derivatives from derivatives we can use uh, Roman numerals another um, notation is let me talk about the second derivative this one d square x d f of x okay I'm sorry let me just have a little bit more real estate here d second f of x divided by dx squared so that's another uh, notation for the second derivative of function f so this is one with uh, second uh, slashes or whatever you call it numeral roman numeral and this is another notation uh, and the third one and the fourth one etc so these are regular integer numbers d cube f of x divided by dx cube that's the third derivative d fourth etc so these are the concepts behind um, taking the second the third the, uh, the fourth derivatives and any other higher order derivatives so that's what they are that's what higher order derivatives are it's derivative from the derivative and now let's just have a couple of examples and uh, in my examples function functions are functions have this limit everywhere so the first function is f at x is equal to a constant so the graph is obviously if this is a so the graph is straight line okay what's the derivative of the constant a well we already actually spoke about this before but in any case I mean direct calculation f of x plus delta x minus f at x divided by delta x is always equals to zero because f at x plus delta x is a 
and f at x is also a, so it's zero. So the limit is zero, so the first derivative is zero. Now, zero is also a constant, which means that the second derivative, the constant, uh, the first derivative is the constant, so the second derivative would be a derivative from the constant, and we know this is zero again. And the third one, and the fourth one, up to infinity. So, this function is differentiable up to any degree, so any order, uh, the second, the third, the fourth uh, order derivatives, they all exist, and starting from the first, they're all equal to zero. So that's my first very, very trivial example. Now, how about function equals x to the power of n? Well, before uh, we actually made some calculations and we found that the first derivative is equal to nx to the n minus 1, right? Now, it's very easy to prove, and I will probably um, talk about this separately, that if you have a, a multiplier, a factor, times some function, then this multiplier can be taken out from the differentiation. Why? Primarily because, again, remember, limit f at x plus delta x minus f at x divided by delta x, if f at x can be represented as some uh, multiplier times something, this multiplier will be here and there, so it will be outside of the limit, which means that uh, the um, uh, derivative uh, of the function of this type can be represented as the same factor times derivative of this. Now, what is derivative of of x to the power of n minus 1. Well, I mean, we know about this, so obviously this would be this times this, right? So the power becomes a multiplier, and the power is reduced by 1, always. So if it's already n minus 1, so it will be n minus 1, and this will be n minus 2. So what will be the third derivative? n, n minus 1, n minus 2, x to the power of n minus 3. How many times it will last? Well, it will last actually um, n times. So, you see, the third, it's minus 3. So, the n's, I'll use n in parentheses as uh, an indicator that this is n's derivative, would be, well, obviously that would be n factorial, right? n times n minus 1, etc. Um, times 1, uh, and here you will have x to the power of 0, right, n minus n, which is 1. Now this is a constant, right? So the next one would be 0, because this is now a constant. So and different uh, derivatives, as and, and after n, starting from like n plus 1, you will have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 as derivatives. Also, infinitely times differentiable, differentia differentiable uh, function. Infinitely in differentiable. Okay, next example. Next example is a to the power of x, where a is some kind of positive constant. Now, the first derivative, we already logarithm of a times a to the power of x. So, we already calculated this in the previous lecture. So, what is the second derivative? Well, I was talking before that the multiplier can be just um, factored out and then the derivative of the rest can be taken, which means 
we will have logarithm of a, and then again logarithm of a, so it will be square. The third derivative would be cube. The nth derivative would be logarithm to the power of n of a and a to the power of x. And by the way, if my a is if my a is equal to e, remember what e is, right? then this natural logarithm of a is actually equal to 1, right? Logarithm of e is equal to 1, because this is, natural logarithm is logarithm with a base e. So which power I should raise e to get e? Obviously 1. So it will be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 to the power of n is obviously the same 1. So of e to the power of x is e to the power of x. So any derivative from the function e to the power of x, the first derivative, the second derivative, the nth derivative, any derivative would be exactly the same as this function. And this is absolutely a remarkable property of the function e to the power of x. That's why it's so special. I mean, all these exponential growths, etc., which we see, observe in, in the nature, I mean, it's really very much related to a very special property of this function. It's a very important function, e to the power of x. Okay, my last example is from trigonometry. if my function is equal to sine of x. Okay, we already spoke about the first derivative is equal to cosine of x. Now the, the second derivative is minus sine of x, right? The derivative from the cosine, already spoke about this. Now the third derivative is minus, because this is a multiplier, right? And then derivative of sine, which is cosine. Fourth derivative is again minus, and derivative from the cosine, which is minus sine, which is minus and minus will be positive sine. So we see that the fourth derivative is exactly the same as the original function. And then it repeats itself. The fifth derivative would be like the first, the sixth like the second, etc. So it periodically actually repeats itself. All right, these are just simple examples of different uh, higher order derivatives of certain basic functions. And uh, in reality, obviously, the functions which you will be dealing with will be a combination of these, more or less. All right, so that's it for this particular um, item. Uh, so you know what higher order derivatives uh, actually is. I do recommend you to take a look at the notes for this lecture. They're very brief, but just to make sure that you basically inculcate this concept into your mind, it's important to read it on unizor.com. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.